Are you having a good time so far? I know you are. Would you give it up for the full contact late back comedy of Paul Aldrich? Good evening, Orlando. I got one question for you tonight. Are you ready to rock? I said, are you ready to rock? All right, go ahead. Not as ready as you thought. Well, I got my start uh, leading songs to camp. Have you ever been to church camp? You know you sing the strangest, strangest songs known to man in church camp. I found myself out in the middle of the woods with trees all around me, trees, trees, everywhere trees, and then singing songs like, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. <laughs> now let's encourage the camp pyromaniacs. That's a good move here. Uh, and of course you can't leave camp without singing at least a thousand times without stopping. Kumbaya, my lord. What's that mean? Nobody really knows, nobody really cares. Uh, but I got thinking, you know, what if other singers like me had gotten their start leading songs at camp? I mean, maybe our camp songs would have sounded something like this. Kumbaya, stop this singing. Kumbaya, never stop. Kumbaya, never stop. Kumbaya, Kumbaya, Mrs. Robinson. Kumbaya, the place for those who pray. Kumbaya. I want to be a Kumbaya idiot. Don't want to be a Kumbaya hypocrite. A little bit of Kumbaya in my life. A little bit of Kumbaya makes it right. A little bit of I want to Kumbaya. I want to. Join hands round the fire with my friends. I can't wait to sing Kumbaya again. <laughs> Take me down to Kumbaya City where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Won't you please Kumbaya? I sing Kumbaya, man. I sing Kumbaya. From here to Wichita, man. I sing Kumbaya. From Helena to Tucson, Nashville to Sioux Falls, Utica to Utah, Iowa to Saginaw, Arkansas to Panama to Omaha to Yakima. I see who by y'all. There's a man who now needs reading glasses He's losing hair with every day that passes And with every move he makes Another muscle aches Odds are he'll throw out his back tomorrow Middle Taken away 
your sports car and given you a mini van. Yeah, you can't act cool when hair grows in your ears now. And your waist keeps sagging lower every year now. Oh, be careful, don't disclose that your wife picks out your clothes. I thought she'll make you hold her purse tomorrow. Middle aging man, middle aging man. They've taken away your sports car and given you a mini man. Now he's got a secret plan for his retirement. One day he'll finish off his last assignment Then he'll trade that minivan For a Harley Davidson And ride till his hemorrhoids cause him sorrow <laughs> Middle aging man, middle aging man They used to take trips to Rio Now you spend your weekends at home you have to wear art supports now You sit around in your boxer shorts now Cause they've taken away your sports car And given you a mini van Middle-aging man Well, middle-aging man, that's where I am. I turned 50 this last year. I'm somewhere between listening to the Stones for the first time and passing Stones for the first time. That's where I am. I turn around. But in my heart, I, I don't know, I'm middle-aged. I still want to be cool. I still want to be James Bond cool because there's nothing cooler than James Bond. And he just walks into a room, right? Cool music starts playing. I mean, when I walk into a room now, it sounds more like a... Not cool. <laughs> and James Bond is so cool, he always knows when trouble is coming, right? <laughs> Wish I had that in my life. Like, yeah, honey, honey, does, does this make me look fat? <laughs> On the contrary, my dear, it makes you look irresistible. <laughs> Now, I don't have cool theme music playing everywhere I go, but I got the next best thing. I've got a cell phone that plays all kinds of different cool themes when different people call me, right? Like there's a stranger calling, it plays. Who are you? Right? Or if it's my therapist calling, it plays. Feelings. Like you know feelings. Or it's my pastor calling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I let it go to voicemail. <laughs> or if it's my mother in law. <laughs> uh, being middle aged, you know, it's, it's all right, but uh, when you're middle aged, you, you find yourself all of a sudden you're, you're doing things that, that just. That they're just not that cool. Things you don't, you don't dream about. Like, like, I recently purchased life insurance. Nobody grows up to purchase life insurance. It's not a goal. It's not a dream. You just have to do it, right? And to me, life insurance is such a ripoff. To me, life insurance is like a bad poker game. Right? Now, the insurance company is betting I'll live. But genius that I am, I'm betting I'll die. <laughs> Now, now, if I lose and live, the insurance company gets all the money. But if I win and die, my wife gets all the money. Yeah. Can I sign up for some more of that? Oh, please. I'm all in. Yeah. Oh. Oh, the other day, somebody asked me about my retirement plan. Look, look, I'm a comedian. 
We don't have retirement plans. Right? We're the old guys you see in rest homes still desperately trying to make people laugh. You know, pulling out our false teeth, you know. Oh, my robe opens in the back. <laughs> well, I don't want to end up like that, so I, I decided to go visit a, a financial planner. And so this, uh, this financial planner said, well, the first thing you need to do, if you want to retire comfortably, the first thing you need to do is you need to get that first million dollars together and put that aside. <laughs> Which brings me to why I'm here tonight. Ushers, if you could, please. <laughs> Support a starving comedian. Huh? <laughs> no, but actually, I, I went home after talking with him a little bit discouraged, but then I thought, you know, I, I, need, I need to do something. All of us, we, we, need, to, we need to think about, about the future. I, I, think, I think God wants us to be good stewards, good, good planners of, of, of our lives and our future. And so I went home and I thought, well, I've got to put a plan together. So I, I put my own little plan together. And, and so, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't have a million dollars, but, but I think if I, if I stick, you know, to this plan, if I'm faithful to this plan, I think this will work. And maybe my financial plan will work for you, too. Super Lotto <laughs> Oh, how you tingle my senses You break down my defenses I'm so broke now But I'm not quitting Cause your jackpot's up to a billion That's almost a million After taxes, I think <laughs> So I'm standing here in line again to buy me one last quick pick. Won't you give me winning numbers this time, please? Don't you make another millionaire out of some illegal alien. <laughs> this time bless a poor American like me. <laughs> Super Lotto, we've been through so much together. But now more than ever, I need you so. Lotto fever, lotto fever. Oh, it's taken my reason. But I'm still believing you won't let me down. Now I'm watching on my TV screen as your ping pong balls are dancing. And I'm five for five. Just one more number, please I'm betting everything on you My house, my hopes, my heart be true Love me Super Lotto Well, once again you've betrayed me But you've teased and you've played me for the last time, we're through. I've been a fool, yes, but finally, I've learned my lesson. I'll just forget you, Super Lotto. Forget you, Super Lotto. I'll just forget you, Super Lotto. Go to Vegas instead. Well, as I mentioned, I, I am a married guy. My wife and I are just about to celebrate our uh, our sixth wedding anniversary, and uh, that's a uh, six in a row. In case you're keeping count. Um, which by LA standards puts us in the 95th percentile of marriages that made it. So we're very, very proud of that. Um, but but, but we're obviously, we're, we're late bloomers to this whole marriage thing. It's my first, uh, her first, uh, our last. It's going great, thank you. Um, but we actually dated off and on for several years before we finally got married. There were just issues that we had to work through. Uh, her main issue was, hey, I don't want to marry you. <laughs> so obviously uh, she was in denial. <laughs> Whereas my main issue was, uh, 
you know what? I, I don't think we can both live off of what you're making. But being good Christians, we, we always, even when we were dating, we tried to do things God's way. So we faithfully practiced absence the entire time we dated. It's always best to do things God's way. Uh, unfortunately, about a week after being married to me, my wife went back to absence. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. It was two weeks. No, but seriously, now we actually are, are trying to start a family, and, and uh, I mean, to be honest, like, if, if we don't start having kids soon, uh, I, I might end up having to buy both Pampers and a Pence. <laughs> yes, I could be changing diapers while wearing diapers. This is not the vision I had for my life. No, I, I, I love being married, but to be honest, there are some things I, I miss about being single. We have any single people here? Single people make some noise out there. Single folks. Yeah. Right, some things I miss about being single. One of the things I miss about being single, how do I, how do I put this gently? I, I, I miss being places on time. <laughs> now, now, don't get me wrong. My wife, she is beautiful inside and out, but it, it just, like, I just miss being places on time. I mean, do, do we still have a national anthem? <laughs> do they still show those previews at the movies? <laughs> do they still sing songs in church? Now, I thought I knew a lot about women before I got married. It turns out I was wrong. I found the very, very first night that apparently women have a completely different sense of temperature than men. Did you know this? I didn't know this. Like, I go to bed at night, I throw on a sheet, I'm toasty as can be, but not my wife. Oh, no, 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 no. No, first it's sheet, then blanket, then electric blanket, turned up to 15, <laughs> hot water bottle, warm air mister, molten lava flow. Right, she does all this and she turns to me and says, Honey, I'm cold. Hold me. Yeah, my wife is hot. <laughs> now, I thought before I got married, I thought marriage was going to be a lot more like a guy adventure flick, you know? But, but it turns out marriage is a lot more like a chick flick. Because in a good marriage, just like in a good chick flick, it's all about communication. Now, now I like to talk, but my wife loves to talk. No, I like to talk, but my wife loves to talk. So, oh. Yes, guys, it's all about communication. <laughs> now, we got anybody here in love tonight? Anybody in love? <laughs> uh, uh, husbands, husbands, that would be you. Uh, <laughs> that's going to leave a mark. Well, I'm going to do a little love song for you here tonight. You know, there's been a lot of love songs written through the years, but I was thinking the other day, you know, there's never really been a love song written for dyslexics. <laughs> Until now. <laughs> what a wonderful name, Kathy. 
Y-H-T-A-K. And as I spoke her name one last time, Kathy died and went to heaven. But then without warning, she became gravely ill. <laughs> we were so happy then. We had a boy, then a girl. Soon, we were expecting our first. <laughs> Finally, we bought a home, then moved into our first apartment. <laughs> so off we went on our honeymoon. Soon she was dressed in white, walking down the aisle. The next day, I asked her to marry me. <laughs> Y-H-T-A-K And as we danced the night away, I said, Would you care to dance? <laughs> oh, hello. My name is Paul. Then she asked me, What's yours? My name is Kathy with a Y and a K. It was love at first sight. Then suddenly, I saw her. <laughs> All my life, I'd felt so alone. It's not dyslexic being easy. <laughs> Y-H-T-A. I was the woman who combined country line dancing with therapy. Now she's in a 12-step, two-step program. <laughs> First, you choose a partner who reminds you of your mom or dad. Then you form a support group circle and y'all join hands. Men leave your victim partner where you want to go. But ladies, don't you follow them. Just do side do Do the 12-step, two-step, side to codependent. This time, ladies first, blow a kiss to your honey, then stomp his self-esteem. That's right. Gents bow to your darling and let out a primal scream. Ow! And drop step kick their inner child arm and arm promenade your deep nine to the 12 step, two step, side of codependent boogie. 12 to two steps forward, 12 steps back. Redneck recovery is where it's at So give your therapist a whirl And say, yeah, who dance like we have ever gave a concrete book At no time do the fingers leave the hand
when he step forward and 12 steps back, red step recovery is where it's at. He just said, the world. Say, ah, woo! Dance like the wind, her belly's at the country fool. Two steps forward and 12 steps back, red step recovery is where it's at. 